can't believe oh it. Oh my gosh, she has teeth or something in there. I want to welcome you to this episode of BTR Outdoors. And on this episode, we're going to um, build a authentic hobo stove and give you a little bit of history. All right, let's do some hobo history. Um, basically, a hobo was a migrant worker. Um, he was homeless and he would travel from place to place just to find work. Um, he wasn't a tramp because uh, tramps only work when they have to. He wasn't a bum because bums never work. Um, but the life of a hobo is very dangerous, um, especially riding on trains. They always had that possibility of uh, falling off and falling under the train. Uh, many hobos died that way. Um, also to railroad security uh, called bulls um, would throw them off the train if caught. Um, and then weather, you know, if uh, they hopped a train and it started uh, getting cold, they could possibly freeze to death. Um, some, of the, some of the things a hobo would carry would be a bindle, which is the sack or bag they would put all their stuff in. Um, kind of like a modern day backpack like we have today. Um, and a stick, and that they would put the bindle on the stick and that's how they would uh, just travel. And they would put all their useful stuff inside that bindle. Um, hobos actually left signs and symbols for other hobos. They'd leave it in a prominent place um, just to let um, hobos know um, what kind of town they're coming into. Um, a couple of examples would be a, a triangle with hands signifying that the homeowner has a gun to a circle with two parallel arrows meaning get out fast as hobos are not welcome in the area. Um, hobo would carry a stove and basically a stove was a number 10 can was the easy find during the Great Depression lightweight and easy to make the hobo stove was a very useful item to have easy to replace a simple hobo stove could provide hot meals and drinks to a weary traveler um, one of the tools that a hobo um, would carry would be a church key it's basically a bottle opener a can opener um, and they called it a church key because it left the triangular marks in, in the can and also um, it kind of resembled an old-fashioned church key. Um, so I hope you enjoyed Hobo History. Let's get back to the stove. Okay, some of the stuff that a hobo would uh, carry in this bindle. Let's open it up. is of course the stove. Got a can opener slash bottle opener slash church key. Pocket knife, some matches. And a way to start the stove. If you look at this uh, stove, I've already um, built it. But some of the tools that a hobo would probably use would be a knife to cut out the opening. And then the church key to make all the holes because you want all the holes for air to come in and then come out around your pot. And this area right here is where you're gonna put your wood. You're gonna keep it simple, um, something they could use a couple times. They can always find another tin can. Those are real, real plentiful. Um, but yeah, this is something real simple that a hobo would carry and uh, it's, and it really works really good and we're going to test it out okay just for fun um, if you remember last time in the modified hobo stove we used some uh, dryer lint and this makes a real good fire starter as you saw last time um, also to make a good campfire is you stuff it in these uh, toilet paper um, rolls stuff it with your lint, set it on fire, and that will start real good campfires. But uh, today, we're gonna try another uh, fire making technique is I took um, cotton balls and uh, wiped petroleum uh, jelly on them, and we're gonna light those. I've heard they worked really good, I've never tried it, but that's how we're gonna start the fire in the hobo stove today. 
All right, so let's take our cotton ball. Got another one just in case. I've already found a little bit of wood. Let's put this over the uh, cotton ball. I broke these up um, as tiny as I could. It is kind of windy, so I apologize in advance. Let's take a match and see if we can't get this lit. All right. And of course, the winds will start blowing like crazy. We'll see if it goes. Got some real little bee twigs. Come on. She's starting to go a little bit. Let's see some flames. There we go. I think the lint um, was a little bit quicker, but going now really didn't know, uh, need uh, any kind of tinder or nothing like that of course a hobo would probably use some uh, paper or something like that to get it started But this shows you just how simple the process would be. You don't need nothing fancy um, like the last one I built. Um, this is just so something simple. This literally took me um, five minutes to make. Um, a real simple hobo stove. She is catching good now. I hope, hope you can hear the audio because it is winds blowing pretty good. Like I said, it's real. Real important to have holes all the way around the bottom and all around the top. Especially when you would put your uh, pot on top to heat up your food.
but a real simple process. Probably wouldn't hurt to have a, uh, a wind guard, but she seems to be doing pretty good. The fire is uh, still going pretty good, even with the pot on top. And through this big hole, you can still um, keep feeding some fire. Super simple, authentic hobo stove. This would be perfect for backpacking, um, lot, especially because it's so lightweight and you don't even have to carry fuel because you can always find little twigs and leaves and stuff like that anywhere you go. So it just comes in real handy.